Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today I'm trying to modify some Wi-Fi or long-range wireless microwave antennas for geostationary weather satellites. Uh, these are basically the same dish. This one just has a protective cover or radome on it, and this helps protect against ice and snow here in Minnesota. The open dish like that could have some uh, weather buildup on it in the winter, and that would affect the signal. I believe these are made by the Radio Waves Corporation, and they're designed for 5 gigahertz point-to-point -point wireless networks. I picked up a bunch of these a few months ago at a surplus auction, and I've been meaning to get around to setting them up for the GOES Geostationary Operating Environment Satellite. Now, that satellite transmits on 1.7 gigahertz, approximately, so 5 gigahertz feeds that these come with are not really appropriate for that, and I'm going to have to modify them somehow. So you can kind of see both sides of the feed here. The parabolic dish acts as a reflector, so incoming signals get bounced to the centerpiece. This is a secondary reflector because this is what's called a Cassegrain antenna, so the actual receiver is back here, and the signal comes in, gets bounced to the secondary reflector, gets bounced down this hollow tube, and then goes to these little um, pickups or active elements in the back. And there are two antenna ports because this has two polarities available, horizontal and vertical. If you're not familiar with antenna polarization, think of a walkie-talkie. If you hold it upright like this, the antenna is vertical, the radio waves are going out in a vertical orientation, and other vertical antennas will have a better time picking it up. If you hold the radio like this, you may think you look cool, but you're sending the radio waves out in a horizontal polarity, and that means people holding the radio upright will have a harder time hearing you. With geostationary satellites like GOES that send down a linearly polarized signal, this usually manifests as something called skew. And you can think of it this way. If I'm a satellite sitting out here in geostationary orbit about 22,000 miles from the Earth's surface, and this is actually about to scale, uh, this satellite is sitting about five feet away from that globe. That's about a 21-inch globe, so this is about how far out the GOES satellite sits. The GOES East satellite is in a geostationary orbit, meaning it stays at the same relative location of the Earth's surface as the Earth rotates. The satellite's orbit essentially matches the rotational speed, so it will always be over the same spot on the Earth. And if you happen to live directly under that satellite, you would see the signal from it coming in in a perfectly vertical orientation. So with the camera placed directly under the satellite's orbit, this is what the signal looks like straight up and down. Now I've placed the camera at Minnesota's location on the globe and aligned it with local Earth's surface. So it is flat, straight up and down, locally there in Minnesota. It's looking off at a satellite over here to the east, but from Minnesota, looking at the satellite, now the signal looks like it's skewed a little bit to the left. The signal is still straight up and down for the Earth's surface underneath its own orbit. Minnesota is still straight up and down, but as you get farther to the west, the satellites off to the east start to look more and more skewed. Even though this is the exact same signal and nothing has changed about it, the observer sees it rotated because they are moving around the curved surface of the Earth. So what that means for me over in Minnesota, looking at a satellite that's farther east, is I basically just have to rotate the dish a little bit to the vertical alignment of the eastern latitude where that satellite lives. For it goes east, that's about a 17 degree skew or rotation. If we take out the antenna connector, you'll see this is the actual antenna. So everything else here is basically just guiding the radio waves. And this is the electrical connected part that connects to your antenna cable. So this is the entire five gigahertz active element. Uh, and the rest of this is just the reflector and the hollow tube or waveguide. Now, if I want to modify this for 1.7 gigahertz, I would have to make it longer because lower radio frequencies use longer radio waves, and thus you need a longer antenna to efficiently pick up those waves. The problem is a wire long enough to be effective at 1.7 gigahertz actually touches the other side of the metal and grounds it out makes for a poor antenna, so we'll have to come up with something else. If you do know antenna theory and you're wondering where is the ground plane for this one, there is actually a screw that goes all the way through this that lines up with that feed, and then the back part here is the ground plane for this polarity antenna. Again, just kind of a side note on antenna theory that probably not everybody cares about. Now, there are other antenna types you can use for the GOES weather satellites. This is a discovery dish, and this has a little uh, dipole feed in the middle here. Now this is a traditional prime focus dish, so the radio waves are basically coming in, only bouncing once and going to the center of the dish, not bouncing again and going into the back of the dish. 
We could do something like this with that uh, 34 inch 5 gigahertz dish. By the way, these discovery dishes are a great way to get into satellite tech and satellite listening. I'll throw a link to their website down below. Now yet another receiver for the GOES satellite is my Cantenna up here. Um, yeah, this dish is a little cockeyed. I need to get up there and adjust things. It's It's gotten kind of bent, I think, from wind or hail or something. I basically just have a bean can up there with another one of those little tiny probes in it, just a little length of wire, and that is acting like the uh, signal connector or a feed horn. Um, and this works great for getting the GOES weather satellite. Even though it's a little bent like this, I'm still getting a good signal. I can still download GOES satellite imagery. This one is an old surplus C-band satellite TV dish, and you can find these in people's backyards, often for free if you offer to take it down for them. Now, if I already have this dish, what am I doing making another one for GOES? Well, I have a couple projects in mind. Uh, there is a GOES East and a GOES West satellite, and I'd kind of like to see if I can get both of them at once. It's a little bit iffy here in Minnesota. I am i can't quite see the West satellite very well, but I'd like to give it a try. I also have this ridiculous homemade spaceship rocket thing that I'm building, and I'd like it to have a live satellite downloader attached to it. And then I've also talked to a couple of other people who would like to do this. So a couple of these dishes are on the outgoing pile because other people want to use them for goes. And I'd like to kind of figure out before I give them away, how do I modify them? Then I can tell those folks how I did it. Circling back to the Cantana idea, I could do a Cantana feed horn on this, but it's a little bit large. Um, yes, this one's full of stuff. I'm just using it to illustrate. It would kind of block some amount of the incoming signal because this thing is pretty large and any additional supports that I put to hold this in the center focal point would also block some of the incoming signal. So I don't think this is quite ideal for a dish this size. So another option for this is a modified GPS antenna. This used to be a regular external GPS antenna. Uh, I took the back off here and I've removed the filter. So a GPS antenna is tuned for something in the 1500 megahertz range. I want 1700 megahertz or, or thereabouts. So the filter in here, which limits what kind of frequencies it sees, was unnecessary to me, so I've snipped it out. These have the benefit of also having an amplifier built in. So this thing actually has a little signal amplifier right in the chip, and that helps me amplify the incoming signal. The secondary reflector actually just pops right out. It's just kind of a silicone plug that sits in that hollow waveguide tube. So I'm going to replace this with the GPS antenna and see if we can get the GOES satellite. I duct tape that GPS patch antenna onto a scrap piece of PVC pipe and that fits right into the waveguide. You can always tell a professional satellite installation by the amount of duct tape involved. But that's not working. I think I might have damaged my GPS antenna in the past because I'm not getting a jump in signal when I turn on the amplifier. When I turn on the bias T on the software defined radio which gives voltage out to the antenna, nothing changes. So. I think I screwed up something with my little GPS patch. Um, might have to try something different. I realized that I don't remember the polarity on these little patch antennas, and after I talked about horizontal and vertical polarity, there's also circular polarity, and that often looks something like this, or in the case of a patch antenna, it could be a little loop inside there. So these will pick up a linear horizontal or vertical signal. In fact, they'll do equally well with both, but they'll only give you about half the signal strength of a properly polarized horizontal or vertical antenna if the signal is horizontally or vertically polarized. I've used these with GOES before, but they're not ideal for it. They're not very efficient for it. So my next idea for a linear antenna is one of these little log periodic Christmas tree PCB antennas. I've used these before for GOES, and you can tell I've used it before because it's covered in hot glue, but I have successfully used this before for this satellite, so let's give that a shot next. I cut a slot in my pipe so I can just jam that in there. Unlike the GPS antenna, this does not have an amplifier in it, so we'll be using a Nualec Sawbird Plus GOES, which is very well used. All of the uh, writing here has worn off of it. I have a couple of these, but they're all kind of dedicated to different antennas, so I have to keep stealing this one from my lower Thorbit L-band antenna. I should just buy another one. All right, this is working a lot better. Although it's super windy outside, I always pick the best days to do this. I'm gonna swap out this feed. I'm going to put the antenna on the same pole here as my big GOES East antenna because I have all the mounting hardware for a pole. I'm going to aim them both at the same place for now. Later on, maybe we'll switch one over to GOES West. 
Turns out these U-bolts are for a bigger diameter pole, so we're gonna have to swap things around a little bit. Fortunately, I have some other ones, same size, but more thread. So I've been trying to adjust that vertical screw to adjust the elevation of the dish, but instead of pulling the whole dish up, it's warping the dish and it's breaking things. So that's fantastic. All right, I've got the dish, I think, bent back into shape. I've got it mounted a little bit differently so I can mess with the elevation. And I think I have it aligned, so I'd like to test the signal out. Unfortunately, the main software for this sat dump has decided to take a dump and doesn't work anymore on this laptop. I even tried uninstalling and reinstalling it. We'll have to figure that out someday, but I don't have time, so we're just gonna record this in uh, SDR++. Meanwhile, the weather just gets worse and worse here. I think we're supposed to have tornadoes next, so yeah, I always mess with antennas during the best weather possible. Okay, now it's raining. Time to give up on this nonsense. Poked around at this for a while. We currently have a little piece of metal in here, basically um, propping the dish up so it's at the right elevation. It's still kind of a marginal signal in SDR++, but we are getting a recognizable signal. All right, so that seems to finally be working. Pretty happy with that, and that gives me hope that I can use another one of those little 34 inch dishes over here on my redneck rocket project. So this is going to be set up out at Sandland. I'd like to have some dishes on the outside and it would be cool if some of the dishes actually worked. So I've been setting up some of these broken control panels with blinky lights and sound effects and whatnot. These are gonna go inside that spaceship make it look like a low-budget sci-fi TV show and it would be cool to have the screen actually work and actually display a picture of the Earth. So yeah, that'll be a future project, and hopefully we can get that going at some point. I think that'll be pretty fun. So here are some of the images we got from GOES-19 from that little dish, and yeah, everything seems to be working well enough. I've got a few little glitches here and there, a few lines of lost data, but nothing terrible. There are a couple things I could adjust on the dish. I could try to peak the signal a little bit better. I could try to align it just a little bit better, maybe bump it up a little bit higher in elevation, but you know what, so far it's decent, and we're getting some decent images downloaded. So this is an okay dish, and I'm eventually gonna move this dish anyway. I might move it up higher on the pole. I'm not gonna spend the time to peak this to the absolute maximum right now, because we're gonna move the thing eventually anyway. That's all we've got for this one. If you wanna see some of my earlier satellite projects, like some of the antennas up on the garage, you can check out my other videos, and then stay tuned for our future shenanigans, like the space pod here. Thanks to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.